Welcome to the Foss North pre-show. It's been a challenging time with Corona, but thanks to all our sponsors, our amazing speakers and our awesome community, we're turning this into a virtual event. I'm really looking forward to the coming day. And in this show, we will discuss the coming talks. Today, I'm here with uh, Tobias and Henrik, and we're joined by Carol from Ansible by Red Hat. Uh, you're running a virtual event uh, in parallel to ours, the, the Contributors Summit. Could you please tell me a bit about that? So we are having um, the uh, Ansible Contributor Summit. Uh, previously, we were planning to have it, um, of course, in person in Gothenburg as part of Community Day in, at Force North. Um, current situation makes you know, everything a little bit different. So we are having our Contributor Summit fully virtual. Um, we can share the link uh, later on. Basically, um, we're, we're going to have a, a kind of video conferencing as well uh, using Blue Jeans, which is the tool uh, we mainly use at Red Hat for all of our video conferences and meetings. Um, it can take 150 people, so, uh, and we're expecting maybe 30 to 40. Uh, participants. So um, it's, it's not a big crowd. The Contributor Summit is uh, mainly about um, letting the contributors in the community uh, work directly with the uh, core engineering team and core community team um, at Ansible on the project. And of course, we also welcome new contributors of people who are interested to participate but may not know where to start. Uh, we are happy to give some um, tips and, and show them you know, how to onboard uh, joining the project. So um, it's open, it's, um, it's not gonna be a full of uh, uh, one-sided presentations. There will be some kind of general presentations, but we also mainly want to encourage discussion uh, to, to get conversations going and so on. So, so for how long do you keep on going? Uh, for the for today, we will start at eleven uh, UTC, which is in two hours time, and uh, we will this today will probably go on for five, uh, six to seven hours because we will have people joining us through the day from uh, from the United States as well, from East Coast to West Coast. So. Um, it's, it's, it's very dynamic, like you can drop in, drop uh, out uh, anytime you want. And uh, we have an RC channel to kind of go along with, with the chat part of things, uh, as well dash community on Freenode. And um, to, uh, for Monday and Tuesday, we'll have a more of a kind of a free form, we call it a hackathon. It's mainly just kind of open uh, hours where you know, many of the main uh, core engineers and contributors will be online and um, ready to, to discuss topics and answer questions. So, yeah, um, basically just um, very casual and nothing too kind of scripted or, or you know, um, formal presentations. But um, if you have questions about uh, contributing to Ansible or joining the community, uh, feel free to drop in throughout Tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and uh, Tuesday, three days. Awesome. And I'll put the links you share in the description of the video so people can find oh, it. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Cool. Yeah. Good luck with your virtual event, and, and we'll try Thank to you. survive <laughs> ours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you for dropping by. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. So first up tomorrow will be one of our planned keynote speaker, Frank Kalitech. Shek, I guess is his last name, uh, hard to pronounce. Uh, he will talk about GPL and, and why it's great for business, uh, which is a very interesting topic. Uh, and he has experience from this. Uh, he's the, the founder and CEO of Nextcloud. Um, and he's been around for many, many years in, in the open source business. Yeah, and I mean, um... Judging from the uh, from the talk intro that's that's available, uh, the um, uh, whole issue with the uh, Commons clause will it will be interesting to hear a, a next cloud perspective on that, uh, given that you know it's something you can self-host and they are fine with that. Absolutely, and this the whole thing with next cloud is super interesting nowadays, when governments etc. agencies are, are finally realizing that. It might be an issue that the citizens' data is 
it's the property of someone someone else's uh, company yeah so i'm really looking forward to this even for us sort of private individuals next cloud is actually interesting so so i'm sitting next to little raspberry pi 4 here uh, acting as an ass and it's super convenient but tomorrow it'll be all about licenses so the next speaker will be simon pater talking about functional programming with javascript and uh, for me as a functional programming advocate i think that this will be very interesting i mean from the uh, introduction text I completely agree, but of course I'm biased that uh, functional programming is more robust, easier to read, easier to maintain, because typically you just deal with values. Um, so, I mean, for, for me, as a, as a guy who started with machine code, this is like <laughs> the marriage of the two world, worst worlds you can imagine, JavaScript and FP. It's as far as you can get from the metal. Uh, but I, yeah, I but you're, you're, speak, you're seeing that functional programming not only is being that has been adopted by many languages, even Java. Yeah, and I mean it, it makes it more readable and it, it's easier to express yourself. So it's it's a good thing. Uh, it, it's just that it's it's far from where I started and, and sort of my mental model of a computer. But I'm I'm still looking forward to it. it it'll be fun to see how you. Uh, how you merge JavaScript, which I dislike for, for its lack of typing, and functional programming that I dislike because of my lack of understanding. Yeah, but it, it's always intriguing when someone says that they will attempt to explain what a monad is. So that will be, that will be yeah. something to look forward to. Perhaps I finally get it 22 years after my functional programming course at university. I started with a standard ML, so now you have an idea how old I am. Next up is Valentin David uh, from uh, CodeThink. Uh, he will talk about building container images based on free desktop SDK. Um, containers is interesting. I mean, I like the the, uh, the isolation perspective. Uh, I'm still not convinced about the deployment benefits, but uh, it will be interesting to see how, how he handles dependencies and so on in, in this tool chain. Yeah, and I mean, w one of the uh, issues that I can agree with is that once you, when you're building Docker images, you're basing your image on another image on another image, and uh, after a while, one of the images change, and you have to adapt uh, the whole stack. Maybe it's, it can be a hassle to to keep track of. It's like npm for operating systems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but it'll be fun to 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 see one of the insiders actually talk about this and then be able to ask some questions around how they solve these issues. Okay, next talk is Curl Better with Daniel Stenberg. This is super interesting for me, my former profession as a teacher. I taught my students Curl uh, more or less every day and they had it in their fingers after after my courses. So for me, this is going to be an exciting talk. Yeah, and he's, he's been at a few of the events. I think this is the third time he's speaking. He's also been at the FOSS GBG event and he hosts the FOSS Stockholm event. So he's been speaking there. And he, he usually has quite interesting perspectives on, on things. But I've actually never heard him talk about curl, which is what he's famous for. So, so that will be interesting. Yeah, so this is a long time guest of uh, FOSS North. So next up is uh, Elizabeth Lobovesga. Um, she will talk about uh, differential privacy. Um, so basically the concept of introducing noise into a data set in order to preserve the privacy while trying to also preserve the statistical properties of the data set. Um, I mean, this is a very relevant topic for, for today, given the world we live in, uh, but also for, for sort of access to data and the ability to share data to researchers while keeping it anonymous. So, so this sounds very interesting to me. It's, it's like en enabling aggregation while keeping things uh, secret that should be secret or sort of. Yeah, I hope she, she will go into the details. I mean, the complex thing is if you allow multiple questions, you can sort of trick the system. Um, so I think they have a model of how private the data is. So, so you can do a bit like what you do with... Uh, with uptime, where you say that you have five or seven nines of, of uptime, you could have a similar guarantee for privacy that you have five or seven 
digits of privacy here. So you need to, to ask this many questions to be able to, to identify an individual. Interesting, yeah. I mean, it fits well into the whole uh, big data times that we are in, so. Definitely. And p perhaps this is the only solution because getting out of Facebook and uh, what have you is, is practically impossible today. So the next speaker will be Patrick Feldström talking about uh, keeping time and uh, it's about securing MTP. So, I mean, for me, who has only used MTP as sort of, you know, you, you tell your system to connect to some server and then you just trust the results. But I suppose it will be interesting to see if there are like possible error sources and if it's possible to hijack the MTP stream or something. I don't know how it works. I guess the devil's in the details. I mean, Patrick's been around for a long time. Uh, it says that he's worked with internet related issues since 85 in the bio. And I think that's, that's sort of writing yourself down a bit. Uh, I think he's been very central to the internet development in, uh, in Sweden, as I understand it. Uh, and he's been engaged in, in defining some standards that are widely used today, like DNS and, and also this stuff. Yeah. yeah, to me, this is super interesting. Usually these kind of things, even though you, I'm not going to be able to use the, this talk like directly, I'm, I'm not going into a new career or doing NTP, but sometimes you get good ideas of, of li from listening to a totally different uh, talk. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, I mean, these talks generally just show what a complex beast the internet is and how it's actually grown over time in a very distributed manner, which is always interesting to me that it actually came together at the end. It, we, we could have had like 10 different networks in parallel instead. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it.